Hi everybody, this is Bogus Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the NECA Pan's Labyrinth the Pale Man figure. So before we take a look at the Pale Man, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. So first up, you get this really tiny accessory. You get his eyes on the plate here, and the plate actually has some really good texturing to it and a little bit of paint detail. And the eyes have some blood on the back of them, some glossy red for blood on the back. That looks really nice. Really tiny accessory, but I think it looks pretty nice. And finally, the Pale Man comes with his chair. And this is detailed so well. All the different shades to the chair and the sculpt detail, it looks so good. You even get some uh, a black wash over top of the cushion to the chair there. On the back, you can see the wood grain sculpt. And yeah, this is just sculpted very, very well. It's also painted really nicely too, but the sculpt to this thing is incredible. And the Pale Man sits very, very nicely in it. So he looks really awesome like that. So now let's go ahead and take a look at his head sculpt. So taking a look at this head sculpt, NECA did such an awesome job on this. He has really creeped me out. I think one of the reasons he's so creepy is he's like Xenomorphs. He doesn't have any eyes. Well, at least in his face, he doesn't have any eyes. But yeah, this head sculpt looks really nice. The folds of his skin where it's dangling has some really nice paint variation to it. It has some pink tones. His skin has a little bit of yellow tint to it. The detail on this head sculpt looks really, really nice. And of course, he has the eyes in his hands that you can put up like this. And man, that looks really nice. The eyes and the hands look really good. The blood-stained hands look really nice. He has those long, glossy black claws. He has a ton of paint variation on him, and it looks so good. It's a really grotesque figure, but NECA did a really good job of capturing that in sculpt and paint. On his arms, you can see some more of where his skin is draped, and it has some more of that pink tone to it. And also, I think it also has a little bit of brown mixed in there. It looks especially right here like it has a little bit of brown on top of that pink tone. Uh, my only complaint is that the joints right here are very bright white. It would have been nice if there would have been just a little bit of paint over top of them, just because that's very bright, especially if you have the figure posed like this. He has some more really gross sagging skin sculpted detail. On his back, you can actually see his spine. That's a really cool detail right there. He does have really odd hips. I think it's mainly because he's meant to be sitting in the chair like that. But he does have odd hips. It's not the articulation I'm used to. But it does work for the most part. But yeah, all of that paint detail and all of the skin sagging right here. You can see a little bit of the bone right there. That looks really good. And then here are his really, really dirty feet. So yeah, this figure is sculpted so well. It's also painted really well too. Like I said, this is a really gross looking figure and NECA did an awesome job of capturing that. So now, let's go ahead and go over his articulation. The Pale Man has a ball jointed head and neck that can look up all the way. He can look down all the way. He can move his head side to side very nicely and you get a little bit of tilting. He has ball jointed shoulders that can move out that far. He has double jointed elbows that can bend in that far and he has swivel thrusts that can move up and down and side to side which I'm really glad the articulation is there for the elbows, so you can actually get him putting the eyes and his hands up to his face like he does in the movie. He has a ball-jointed diaphragm and waist that can move back very slightly. It can move forward very slightly as well. He has just a little bit of side-to-side -side movement up here in the diaphragm joint, and hardly any side-to-side -side movement down here. That joint is stuck, so I definitely wouldn't move that. He has hips. They can only kick forward that far. Like I said, they're designed this way so you can get him sitting in the chair. And uh, he can't really, well, I guess he can kick back a little bit, but that does look a little funny. And it can move side to side very slightly. He has single jointed knees that can bend back that far. And ball jointed ankles that can move down very slightly, up very slightly, and side to side. So now, let's do some size comparisons. So first up, here he is next to the Pan's Labyrinth Ophelia figure. And finally, there he is next to the fawn. So overall, I would highly recommend picking this up. This recently got a restock on costumes.com. That's where I got this one from. So hopefully everyone that needed one was able to get him. Because he is pretty pricey on the aftermarket. I haven't looked at the prices, but maybe the prices went down a little bit since he got restocked. 
But yeah, hopefully everyone that needed one was able to get one because this is such an awesome figure. So that's my review. If you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.